Aya, do you have a view on that particularly in terms of the, what, what else do you think the private sector with your view is from the African Union can do? Um, are there things that you're doing, especially with the young ones that that, that private sector can learn or do yeah. to help? Yeah, two, two points actually. One, just to follow up uh, on, on the responsibility of private sector. I think they have a huge responsibility on the digital divide, closing the digital divide. I mean, the, the, the ideas that we're hearing now, the innovation is all digital, but I mean, when people come to Africa sometimes and like they do coding, I'm like, we don't have laptops. How do you want people to use coding? And so there are solutions that work for the world and maybe work for Europe, especially because of the refugee. And I agree completely with you. There is no crisis of refugees, just crisis of leadership. I think for Africa, the context is different. And I think now is the time for private sector to really have pull off their responsibility towards uh, closing the digital divide and not leaving us with you know, no access to all these opportunities. I think we need to look at African yeah. countries in supporting the infrastructure for everybody, because if you support the infrastructure of any African country, it can then serve the refugees. Um, and just to also say that we have the largest population of refugees and the largest population of migrants. They've been here for decades and their African solidarity showed that every uh, one coming from another country is, is the host, uh, the next door neighboring country. But yet we are still struggling with infrastructure. So even at, at COVID time now, where our health systems are not accommodating even for citizens who you know, have basic access to uh, their infrastructure, refugees don't have access at all. Um, and so for me, I think private sector now needs to step up to their responsibility. Um, if they want to you know, sponsor all these tech gurus and startups and innovation, they need to first provide us with infrastructures to be innovative. Um, and so in terms of African Union, of course, we work with a lot of uh, private sector mobilization. We launched uh, last year a project called One Million by 2021. Um, and so it's a project to mobilize one million, uh, to impact the lives of one million youth in each African country in entrepreneurship and employment, education and engagement, like the four E's. Um, and so in that project, we mobilize a lot of private sector, even, you know, media houses and, uh, you know, the um, we, we brought even the FIFA last year into the, uh, the AU summit. And so we brought different stakeholders together to really um, engage in what can we do to solve the employment issue in Africa, to be innovative, but also to provide sustainable uh, solutions. Great. That is quite impressive. I've got a couple more questions on COVID-19 on and around from, from the audience. So um, this applies to all of you, actually, um, and it's a view from each of you, really. Um, in your experience, what has been the biggest challenge facing young leaders during the COVID crisis? Um, I know one or two of you mentioned uh, the refugee camps in, in Lebanon, the fact that it's, it's now going to hit and, and what that, that, that frightening impact will be. But at the same time, it's, you know, Africa is, is more than capable of doing a lot for itself and it, it is able, it's not the first pandemic it's seen and is well prepared in terms of